Ernest Hemingway wrote a short story called The Capital of the World. And in it, he profiles a man who's looking for his son in Madrid, Spain. And he had run off to become a matador, a bullfighter. Now, you can tell by that image there that to be a bullfighter is a pretty uh, scary occupation. So in a last desperate attempt to find his son, he put an ad in the Madrid newspaper and it said, Dear Paco, meet me at Hotel Montaña noon Tuesday. All is forgiven. I love you, your father. Well, that Tuesday, the Spanish Civil Guard was called in because there were 800 Pacos in front of this newspaper uh, uh, area looking for their fathers, that they were all seeking forgiveness, all hungering for the love of their father. Isn't that we all want ourselves to be with father, to be with, with all those who love him? And so today is a continuation of this joy that all is forgiven, I love you, in the celebration of Easter, Easter, the Easter days, eight days. And so today is the last day which we celebrate as Divine Mercy Sunday to recount our Heavenly Father's overflowing mercy for the world by sending forth his Son so that all can be forgiven for our Heavenly Father loves us. Now, the English word mercy is derived even from the French word in which we say thank you, merci, which comes from the Latin merced, which implies like wages or or price paid, which also we get the word merced as in merchandise. So in the sense of mercy is really something tangible, that someone has to pay a price and all the recipient can say is Thank you. Thank you for this tangible free gift you've given to me. And ironically, mercy is for those who do not deserve mercy. And I would say three individuals in particular who were so intimate with our Lord and yet they couldn't believe the depths in which our Lord would show mercy. Judas betrayed our Lord. He said there's no way that the Savior can be um, the, the, the one who is a, a mere Jewish rabbi. Peter denied Jesus three times, and today Thomas doubts our Lord's resurrection. And so as we just read, Thomas is not with the ten when Jesus appears to them on Easter Sunday. In which, and so, you know, thankfully he does not, Thomas does not despair. In contrast to Judas. Judas, again, didn't, uh, betrayed our Lord, and he could never uh, believe that all is forgiven by virtue of what Jesus would do. And so the first witnesses to our Lord's resurrection in John's gospel are overjoyed by encountering tangibly the Lord's resurrected body. And then they go and try to find Thomas and tell him what had happened. And Thomas doubts. For he says, unless I I touch him, if I can put my finger in the marks of his hands and and put my hand into his side, I won't believe. And so he's really thinking, which I think we all have to appreciate, that this Jesus, this God becomes human and he has to suffer and die. How in the world can this be that he would come back from the dead and it would be a joyful occasion as a result? And so it would take a week later that Jesus comes to Thomas personally in the sense of the disciples bringing Thomas, bringing him back into the community and Jesus approaches Thomas and allows him to touch him. And by doing so, he's really saying, Thomas, all is forgiven, I love you. And the mercy of Jesus and his initiative to Thomas so moves Thomas to say, my Lord, and my God. Eventually, Thomas, after encountering Jesus' mercy, feels so compelled that he's willing to, to share the good news, beginning in the Middle East, and eventually bringing the gospel to India, where he was martyred there. 
And so for someone who doubted our Savior's mercy, that he didn't believe that our Lord would come back from the dead, to the point where he lays down his life, I think it's, it's a reminder for us that sin does not have the last word. Love does. And this love is tangibly shown in mercy. Wages paid. Something tangible like merchandise and all one can respond to this free gift is thank you. And so for this, the eight days of, of this Easter joy, our hope must overflow and, and especially to bring this good news to the people who, who once heard it but said, no, I, I don't believe this anymore. And I think specifically to last Sunday, we had 5,000 people coming through St. Michael's last weekend. And now, where are they? Now, granted, today's weather is a little inclement. And I think, unfortunately, it's kind of this, okay, Christmas and Easter, they, they come. And I think how easy it is that we see in the disciples something of our own lives, how easily we can be impetuous, we can be weak, we can be short-sighted. And so what's the remedy to this? Mercy. And we encounter this mercy every Sunday. That when we feel like doubting, when we feel like betraying our faith, when we feel like uh, denying our faith, all the more reason do we bring people back into community. That essentially Thomas was saved and even the gospel was brought to the Middle East and India because the ten said, Thomas, come back, encounter the Lord. And I think it's incumbent for each one of us to do the same. As we've encountered God's mercy, he speaks to us we taste him tangibly, and then we're, we go on a mission. The, the word mass implies mission. And I think it's a task for each one of us to say, well, who are the Thomases in my family, among my friends? Who are the ones who heard the gospel and said, oh, I don't really need it, or life is so overwhelming that God doesn't fit into it? And I think we have to be the, the ones who bring people back to our Lord to tangibly encounter the Lord, that they may encounter him personally, to the point where they're like the Pacos, looking for, for forgiveness from their fathers. And for people to know that by virtue of Jesus' mercy, that he died on the cross to save us, to restore us, to recreate us. And that really he says to, to each one of us, all is forgiven, I love you, your father. And so this is really the sense of, of our field hospital, is that this is a place where wounds are healed, the hearts are warmed. And so let us share this good news, this divine mercy, that our Lord has paid the price for our sins 2,000 years ago and today. And that by virtue of, of us being like this father in this story of uh, the, the capital of the world, that we can be the ones who acclaim to people, the Pacos in our world, that all is forgiven. I love you, your father.